Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and I'm your guide through the technician class training videos. I'm pleased to report that the videos are up to date for the fifth edition of the ARRL ham radio license manual for the technician class ham radio license. This manual is valid from July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2026. First of all, is it ham radio or amateur radio? Well, it's called both, and the terms are interchangeable. What do hams do with amateur radio? Well, lots of things. It's really many hobbies in one. Some enjoy the public service aspects. Others just like to chew the fat with other hams. Or maybe talk with the astronauts on the International Space Station, or hidden transmitter hunting, how about bouncing signals off the moon, or amateur television, or participate in contests to see how many other countries you can contact? The possibilities seem limitless. Oh, and one more thing. Although you can use the Morse code if you want to, even as a technician, it's not required for any class of license. Whew. Our use of the airwaves has to be coordinated with other users, such as shortwave radio stations and public service activities. The ultimate arbiter of use of the radio waves is the International Telecommunications Union, or ITU, an international treaty organization in Switzerland. In the United States, the government agency coordinating radio is the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC. The FCC, in turn, has created rules governing amateur radio. There are three kinds of license currently being issued by the FCC, starting with the entry-level technician class, then general class, and then amateur extra class. We're going to study for the technician class in this video series. I also have videos for the general class and amateur extra class, but we won't worry about those just now. These videos will make frequent, constant references to a particular book. It's from the American Radio Relay League, the U.S. National Organization for Amateur Radio Operators. The book is the ARRL Ham Radio License Manual, subtitled, All You Need to Become an Amateur Radio Operator. These videos tightly align to the book. Now, the way ham radio exams work is like this. There's a pool of potential questions, several hundred, and the answers are public for each one. The actual technician examination is only 35 questions, all drawn from the question pool. Every question in the pool is addressed in the text, along with an explanation. So the cycle is this. You view my video that introduces the section. Then you study the text of the section and the questions. You can look up the answers and restudy the material if there's something you don't understand. If you still have questions at that point, I'll bet other people will have the same question. So put your question in a YouTube comment on the video covering that section. Then go on to the next video and repeat the cycle. When you're done, you take the exam. And when that time comes, I have a video to prepare you for the logistics of getting your license. So why are we using the book? Well, the book explains enough material to answer each question, but not much more. I found over a couple decades of teaching ham radio that the exam material doesn't really train you for what to do when your license arrives. So I'll provide a bit of further background, show examples, and talk about why things are so. 
The one thing I won't cover is the test itself. Yes, if you're a good test taker, you can memorize the questions and answers. I've met quite a few people who've done this, and when they get their license, they ask, now what? Having not a clue as to what to do next. To avoid that, I'll try to provide additional background, not only to illuminate sections of the book, but other background information as well. My goal is to help you become an active ham radio operator, not just a mere license holder. We'll follow the book closely. I'll talk you through what it's like to become a ham radio operator and guide you through all the things that you need in order to pass the examination. This is the book you're looking for. Although its size might appear formidable, not all of it is instructional material. In the table of contents, you can see the sections in the book, covering many diverse topics, both technical and practical. Let's just look at how the book is structured. The table of contents breaks things down. Chapter 1 is purely introductory, so we'll cover that in a single video. After that, we'll do everything at the level of each section of a chapter at this level. The book talks about the American Radio Relay League, the 130,000 strong organization of amateur radio operators that is the voice of amateur radio in the United States, which you can find at www.arrl.org. Then come the chapters. On page 2-4, for example, you'll see diagrams, tables, the text, and at the beginning of each subsection, the actual test questions that will be addressed. Material in each subsection is keyed to the questions in bold. Previous editions of the license manuals have included comprehensive glossaries. To help create a common glossary across all ARRL publications, the ARRL has created a common glossary at arrl.org slash ham hyphen radio hyphen glossary. If you run across a term or concept you do not understand, add a comment to the video or submit your question to the Ask Dave QST column at askdave at arrl.org. A word of warning here. The four choices may not be in the same order on the actual test. So if you memorize that the answer to T3B01 is C, the wavelength, on the actual test, the correct answer, wavelength, may be option B. After the test questions come a few advertisements from the big amateur radio suppliers. An oft-asked question is why a license is needed in the first place. There's definitely a reason. Hams can use lots of radio bands with up to 1500 watts power. The amateur radio service is the only service that can and do design, test, and build their own radio equipment. You can put up large outdoor antennas of your own design. There are other public safety radio users and any interference with them could be a danger to life or property. It's just that the FCC wants some assurance that you know what you're doing and you won't be a hazard to yourself or others. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio and I urge you to join even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On The Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.